My name is Salam al Din. I'm standing before you here today as the founder of an NGO called Team Humanity. But before 2015, I was just like what most of us would consider to be a normal guy. I had a job, family, home, friends. What more could a person want? But in September 2015, I saw a picture that floated the media and shocked the world. That picture was of Alan Kurdi, a three-year-old Syrian refugee who had died trying to get safety in Greece. That final picture of Alan Kurdi played on my mind for days. I had to do something, so I went to Greece and started helping. I met good and trustworthy people, selfless people who just wanted to help out others in their time of need. So we began to save lives. Some of you may be thinking, why would these people need help? The matter is quite simple. Violent rapids, freezing temperatures, all to be endured by men, women, children, and elderly in cheap rubber dinghies. These boats weren't fit for travel in the sea. Nonetheless, we persisted with our work, saving lives every day to the best of our ability. But sometimes this wasn't, this wasn't enough. I've held, held dying people in my arms as their bodies turn cold and it's harsh reality to know that some of the last words they said were to me. These words were often, will I survive or please help me? I held the dead bodies of innocent babies and children in my arms. In our struggles to save people, we decided to buy a boat so that we could limit the amount of human life lost. As boats were sinking far out at the sea and not even making it to the coast, we followed all the standard channels of approval and registered our boat with the port authorities. Now I request you all to relive this moment with me. It was the early hours of 14th of January, around 2 a.m. I was in my car patrolling when I got a notification by one of the volunteer groups that the boat was sinking at the south coast. However, no coordinates were provided. This meant the situation had just shifted from bad to worse. We knew people were in trouble, but we didn't know where exactly. These people might only have minutes to live. Believe me, it's not a pleasant experience to watch someone drown in front of you, let alone thinking what it's like to experience drowning. Me and four other lifeguards immediately got ourselves ready, drove to the harbor, and went into the rescue boat, and sailed off for search and rescue. We notified the Hellenic Coast Guard, who told me to contact them if we found the boat or its location. As I was sailing around, trying to find the sinking boat, suddenly a big military ship came toward us with high speed. It stopped us and we were arrested. I was falsely accused of human smuggling without any evidence to prove it. I was in Greek waters and without any refugee on board my boat. But the authorities were quick to overlook this. I spent 48 hours in jail. It makes my stomach turn to think how many refugees may have died in that time and how the power of the authorities could have been better used to save lives rather than attempt to ruin them. After spending 48 hours in jail, we each had to pay bail in order to be released. My bail was set at 10,000 euro. After my release, I was not allowed to leave Greece for one year and eight months. In the meantime, I continued my humanitarian efforts on a variety of projects, providing displaced persons with food, clothing, shelter, and other humanitarian aid. I believe in humanity, and I believe there is a lot of it in this room here today which is why I urge you to put yourself in my position and think, what will you do if you were being accused for something that completely goes against what you stand for? What if someone said, everyone in this room represents evil, dishonesty, and deceit? Well, this is how I feel when I'm told I could be facing life in jail for trying to do the right thing and help people. And even if the system were to fail, to fail me, I thought I have faith that it won't. My concern is not that I may spend the rest of my days behind the bars over a fictitious claim, but in fact, it is that people are still dying right now, and some people have the audacity to say that the bad days are over. I implore you to listen to me and other grassroots NGOs that have another other agenda other than just help. The situation is very real in Lesbos, and I don't see it getting better anytime soon, unless we come together and help each other. Right now, as we are sitting here in the building of the European Parliament, children are sleeping with, our family, with their families in small, thin, wet summer tents, almost freezing to death. As the cold of winter is drawing closer day by day, 
I want to thank friends, supporters of my NGO Team Humanity, and lastly, everyone who has helped in this crisis. Every single volunteer who made sacrifice for the sake of others. Without them, an even bigger collapse would have happened to Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, I humble myself as I stand before you here today and ask you to please help me for the sake of humanity. Thank you.